spirits don't live on earth because it is men with flesh. Beings, it's beings in flesh that are legal on earth. So God wanted to extend his kingdom influence on earth and he created mankind, say humans, say humans, humans, to do what? To rule on his behalf over the things he created on earth. Oh, if you will not go back to this original beginning, your understanding will always be dwindling about all the things. So from the very beginning, God wanted you and me to have kingdom, say have kingdom. Say half kingdom. Say half kingdom. That's a very important statement. Very important statement right here. Because if you rule over something, you are a king. And in all these things God created that we should rule over. Please look up again. Genesis 1 26. Did God ever say you should rule over a man pace? Dominate a man pace? Because the word rule means to dominate, to have dominion. And kings rule, they are sovereign rulers. Did God ever say we should rule over fellow, we should dominate fellow human beings? See, he asks us specifically to dominate other creatures, excluding mankind. This is not statement I'm just saying right here. Because human governments are established to function effectively when they think they should lord over the citizens. True of us. God never said we should dominate fellow man. It's wrong to do that. That's why if you, take, if you harass people and you, you know, abuse them and do wrong things to them, you know they will fight you, isn't it? Because I am having the same essence like you, the same spirit in me. I have a soul, you have a soul. I have a body, you have a body. Why do you think I'm more human than me? And cursed be any nation on earth. Cursed be any people on earth. Cursed be any group, tribe on earth. That thing, they are more human than other human beings. It's always a curse. And that's why their lives and happenings are the way they are. God thinks about you. Verse 12. Uh, if we go to Psalms 115, right here, verse 12. It says, it's still making up to Psalms 8, verse 4. It also says, the Lord has been mindful of us and he will bless us. What's the result of God thinking about you? Say blessings. blessings. You will have it in Jesus' name. Nam kaya kasalash. Riku kaya kasebra. You will have it in Jesus' name. Amen. I just spoke some words right there for you. So, quickly, let's introduce a few things. I may not say many things right there because I think I'm giving you a whole lot of ideas right there. God needed who to rule over the earth. Say, ruler. Remember, we're still talking about why did God create man. And we want to repeat to you God's original kingdom intents of man. God needed, just keep the focus on the board with the phone. God needed a ruler to rule over his ethnic creation. Did you see that? God also needed a manager over his resources. Manager over whose resources? You don't own anything in a kingdom. Who owns all things? So this ownership mentality, the world is changing. Capitalist mentality, the world is teaching is wrong. According to the kingdom. While you're on air right here and according to state and human governing laws, you can own property, they say. But always have the understanding that as a kingdom citizen, God owns all things and you are what? Say the manager. If you understand like that, praise God, if you understand like that, you're going to know one thing. Whenever the owner needs something, whenever the owner is asking for his thing, what do you do? <laughs> so I have a problem with church people who are so full of grace knowledge and they have limited understanding about stewardship in the kingdom of God. You have to beg them to give for church work. Cajole them. You have to convince them. You have to make a peace. It's not supposed to be so. That's not God's intention. See, the church has failed badly because if we have laid a strong foundation for kingdom stewardship, it will not be a struggle when you want to develop the church. Guess what? If you read Acts 2, Acts 3, right up to 4, the early days church understood this, you know, commonwealth mentality in the kingdom. God needed what? Say, manager. Does, is the manager the owner of the property? I'm a property manager. I don't own it, but I've been given privileged access to manage as per the principles of who? Say the owner. Say owner. So I'm not supposed to impose my own things. And one aspect of management in the kingdom is this. Add value to whatever you have entrusted to you to manage. Again, why did God create man? He needed whatever his resources on earth. Say manager. Who see it? 
God also wanted an administrator on earth. Say administrator. administrator. Yesterday I uploaded some videos on my Facebook page talking about the Lord's Prayer, the prototype formula, the formula that Jesus gave to guide in prayer. The, the formula that covers essential aspects of worship be a kingdom priestly prayer. Amen. It's a formula. It's not something to be recited. Shocking. Hello. At your age, our Father who art in heaven, hello be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses and lead us not into temptation. But I, with gray hair, what's wrong with you? With gray hair, you're praying that. With gray hair on your head. To 45 years old, children and grandchildren, you're still praying that. Grow up, my friend. It's time to win the baby. You should go read Hebrews chapter 5. Amen. Amen. What Jesus gave right there is a prototype, it's a formula of prayer. Verse 10 of Matthew 6, he says this. Pray this prayer. Lord, pray to the Lord that his kingdom come, his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. His will be done on earth as well, as it is when? In heaven. Excellent. Are people sick in heaven? Are you sure? Is there poverty in heaven? Is there homosexuality in heaven? So God wanted... When you want people to do what you want them to do, you set up a law, right? And you train your people, right? And you take the law to them, isn't it? Which has your culture in it, isn't it? Do you know there are some towns in cities that bear the names of other countries in the world? For example, in the US, there's a town called Chinatown. Where is it called Chinatown? If you go there, typically, you will appear everything right there has it's like China, you're in China in effect. The food, the dressing, the talking, even in Maryland today in the US, it's like you can stand right here, you're hearing the next level speaking pigeon. Uh, I talk to someone who will appear in a whole neighborhood. It's just the same tribe people. We get up in the morning, I mean, we just talk like that. It's like there's no different. Like everything, that's why people can't live from the same culture. <laughs> it's a culture. That's why people who carry me from Africa and carry their masks to the US. Amen. So when they're having their cultural week, they put on their masks, they wear it and do some display. It's the power of culture. God wanted Matthew 6 10, the culture of heaven to manifest on earth and so to administer and rule the earth through the hands of men without opposing human governments. Remember that day. Amen. So we are not, we don't train people to oppose human government. That is not the mentality of the kingdom. Amen. Praise God. So he wanted an administrator. What does an administrator do? He administers. He rules over. He, you know, he enforces, all right, a law and all of that. So God wanted an administrator and if you don't want to call this, administ this word administrator, just say colonial administrators mm -hmm. or a colonialist. Pray that the kingdom of God manifests on earth, his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Amen. And that, that is the desire for a heaven, the culture of heaven to manifest on earth. I'm going to take a series very soon, as God permits, and unveil to us essential elements of kingdom culture. Dress code is one of them. Talking is one of them. That's when you understand that we speak in tongues. It's the language of heaven. Hello. I see religious minds, not yours. God wanted... Or rather, put it this way, God desired the colonization of earth for heaven. It's a colonization. To colonize a people simply means, number one, you capture them, you conquer them. And what do you do? You don't take them back to your territory. What you do is this, you send your people with their culture to go live with them and rule over them and impose that culture. Say colonization. Now, if you read Galatians 4 verse 1 forward, the scripture says, when the fullness of time came, God sent his only son, born of a woman, of course, the virgin birth, Jesus Christ, to die for mankind and save him from sin. Say the fullness of time. Say fullness of time. That phrase is very important. It's what we call the prototype timing. What was it about this fullness of time that God would have to come? Why, why? I mean, between Abraham's, Adam's sinning rather, and the coming of Jesus Christ, is several hundreds of years. Why did God stay that long? Amen? Even to the extent of the Old Testament, the Israelite people, let me put it to you, please. From the beginning, God intended to colonize the earth. Amen. Amen. God wanted his influence over the earth he had created. That influence would require that God should walk through mankind, save humankind. Amen. All right. 
and none. God cannot just take all the humans at once, those that are true of us. So there's a particular race he would choose. He had to choose the Israelites. That was his chosen race. His favorite people, by law, he decided to do so. Don't question him. Amen? Now, through these people, he started working with them to reveal his original kingdom intention. All other humans who are on earth had human governments, human kings ruling over them. Amen? And the more a king was powerful, that is the more the king would conquer other kingdoms, right? And bring them under his control, and he will form one we call an empire. It's an empire. empire. Come on now. Now, so several empires existed. And all this while, the Israelites, after Adam sinned and God had totally abandoned them, so to speak, they were struggling on their own and they were ruled by a system of government called theocracy. See, theocracy. In theocracy, you have a prophet, okay, who hears from God and influences the administration of the people. Come on now, say prophet. From Egypt, who was their leader? Say Moses. Moses handed over to Joshua and all of that till they got to the promised land and lived years after that. Before now, the people started seeking. The Israelites were abused a lot, harassed by others a lot. And you know what they said? First Samuel chapter 8, verse 20. God give us a human king. We are tired of walking at them with no one to lead us like a king, like others are. Amen. And so from the very beginning, man had been desiring a king to rule over him. Amen. Amen. And now, God understood it, but the timing was not yet right for Jesus to come on earth, despite Genesis 3. This is what I'm saying so important. It's a deep revelation for you. If you understand this, the Bible makes sense. You know it's no longer a religious thing. You are just reading for rituals. Praise God. So watch this. What was unique about this fullness of time? Now, Egyptian Empire came in. Uh, Grecian empires came in. Even the Babylonian Empire, say Babylonian. And you heard that one, Babylon, right? All these empires before the Roman Empire, it's not one important thing. It backs of that scripture. Guess what they did? When they come and capture a people, what they do is that they take all of you to their host country, all right? And make you work slave as slaves for them, true of us. But not with the Romans. Romans were smart people. Guess what their own system of administration did? Rome was so smart, they wanted to control the whole world. This is what they did. They are dead known well. When they capture a people, this is what they will do. They do not take you to Rome. Hello? Hello? Have we gotten something up to now? They don't take you to Rome to work slavery. What they do is this. They send their Roman administrators. Say the Mediterranean. Okay. In those days, let me take you quickly. Luke chapter 2, please. Open that for me. Luke chapter, Luke chapter 2. Let's look at something right here. Luke chapter 2. Man dos calibra di shalagasta telebro kaya balikra asande lebra de shalis. Nek la kaya gasante la gushari baras. Luke 2 verse 1. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus. Say Caesar Augustus. That all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenus was governor of Syria. Say governor. And everyone went into his own city to be taxed. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Say Caesar Augustus. This is a Roman colonial administrator. Hello. Hello. Okay. Say Herod. Say Pilate. Make sense? You heard about Herod and Pilate now. One of them was in charge of the Judea province. Say Judea province. Where, 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 where were they from? These were all Roman colonial administrators and the Israelites were colonized. They were subjugated. They were under Roman dictatorship. Amen. And all this why they had suffered so much in the hands of Rome to the extent that they wanted the prophetic word that the prophets had foretold that the Messiah shall come and deliver them. They wanted this word to come to pass so fast. But the timing was not right up to now until Rome came in now and colonized Israel. Now, oh boy, if I want you to have mastery of how this laser presenter works, right? Shouldn't I expose you to it? Shouldn't I permit you to hold it and keep using and I will show you, right? Then the more exposed you are, will you be familiar with the systems? You know the oppressions, the concepts about it, right? And now, uh, here are the Israelites. The Israelites have been exposed to Roman colonization. Say colonization. 
Somehow they have also been made to inherit the Roman culture. Now they have been made to understand words like say ecclesia. Say ecclesia. Okay, say evangelism. Say apostle. These are words they are not familiar with. And Jesus, if he steps in on the scene right now and starts using those words about his kingdom, wouldn't the people he is talking to understand easily? Say they will understand. At the same time too, when Jesus will be coming on earth, the timing was already right and the Israelites have understood something about colonization. So if God comes now on earth and starts saying, look, uh, it's been the Father's desire from the very beginning, hello, God desired from the very beginning that uh, heaven should manifest on earth. And he sent people on earth, you, you were created and sent on earth right here, to fulfill that mandate. The people were like, okay, wait, is this similar to what the Romans are doing? Oh yeah, Rome, Caesar is right there in Rome, and right here in Israel, we have administrators speaking on behalf of Caesar, demanding and dictating things, doing things exactly like Caesar would have done. Yet Caesar is not physically present. And so that was that perfect timing. The Roman system of administration, though they were dictators and all of that, God was attracted to that kind of mentality because that had been his original plan for earth, say colonization. So from the very beginning, God wanted the earth to be colonized with the culture of the kingdom and he created who for that purpose, say you and me. So we are colonial administrators. God wants you in your sphere of influence to take the revelation of this kingdom work and help men rediscover why they were created. Hello? Does it make sense? Are you getting something? All right. So.